Today's video for air conditioning, a 1991 GMC K1500. Completely painted all the way down to stripped off the frame and the frame was painted. Uh, very detailed vehicle. The history it came from Chicago and we know there's a lot of salt on the roads back there and yes the rust has been hidden. Uh, you can see the evidence of paint immediately on the grommet. When you see that on a car and you see a little little tiny crack back there with rust dripping through on a seam seal uh, and you know the history is from Chicago. Any of you guys who live in the Rust Belt know what I'm talking about. Okay, so air conditioning. I have it on the pump. I cannot get below 29 and when I do it loses it fast. Let me hook up the other one. Uh, it came in with a retrofit fitting on it. It came in with only one wet retrofit fitting on it. I just placed this here for testing and I was going to put dye in the system and test it with dye. but see it's failing vacuum really fast uh, this is a notorious R4 compressor from General Motors it came in with zero PSI so the leak could have been somewhere else but this has been it was totally disassembled engine out and everything so this AC system was sitting exposed to the atmosphere a lot of moisture this AC system this notorious case when these compressors get old there's a seal right here there's a seal right here from the case housing it gets old it's no longer malleable no more it's no longer elastic it has no more springiness to it no more they lose their ability to seal okay I've talked about that and I've actually showed videos where I found the leak and I spray a little bubble soap on there and, and find a leak leak detector UV dye coming out through the case seals notorious everybody who's been working on these I was working on these these were a new car when I started working um, what else a notorious leak when somebody tries to change these pressure switches because they were notorious for going out they would buy an aftermarket one or an OEM there's a little o-ring on your hair they would get a standard size o-ring because it looked close and they would put it on there it would become a leak the other thing they put a wrench on it and they over tightened it it would become a leak because you tightened it too tight only hand tight and once it touches just a little oomph more that's it if not it'll come back as a leak later on uh what else so right off the bat i know there's a problem because it wouldn't pass vacuum uh vacuum is a very very poor way to look for leaks we're still doing our visual oh you're not going to see nothing because of this bright sun and it looks like they got a brand new condenser in here, so I don't got to go anymore. This came from, they have a body shop back in Chicago and one out here in California. And it just came back from Chicago. So, instead of wasting my time in putting refrigerant in it, I already know I can't draw a good deep vacuum on it. I will shoot this up with dry nitrogen. I'll put about 150 PSI if I even could go that high. So let's uh, crank down the old vacuum. Vacuum is off and it's dropping. Let's open up a little pressure. And let's see what I find. We're at 70 PSI, 80 PSI. I'm listening. I still don't hear nothing. I'm at 100 PSI. In the background, I have a screw compressor going on. In the background, I have a body shop fan going on in their big spray booth. So I have a lot of, and I should shut off my vacuum pump. I have a lot of background noises. So listening for leaks with this many motors on in the background gets a little difficult. Another thing, a hint. Every compressor job you do, every car you do, whether it's good, whether it's bad, no matter what, if you can, by hand, always grab the compressor and twist it, just so you get to know that style, year, make, model compressor, and what it should feel like when it, when, when you know it's full on refrigerant and it's good, feel what it feels like when it's full. Then 
drain out the refrigerant. Feel what it feels like when it has zero PSI. Then put it on a vacuum and spin it again. Feel what it feels like when it's under a vacuum. Now, notoriously, there's a couple compressors that the shaft seals will leak. If you have it under a vacuum and you spin it by hand, especially the old FX15 Ford compressors, the seal will le actually leak and let vacuum bleed through if you spin it by itself. Sometimes you don't even have to spin it. The, uh, those old Fords were notorious. But if you disturb a couple compressors and you went to test them, they would leak. But the secret to that was now it'll leak. You can't draw a good vacuum. All you do is pump in some positive pressure with some dry nitrogen and it would lift the seal back out into its position to seal on the shaft and then you can draw a proper vacuum again. That's the secret to getting a shaft seal to reseat and work. If you had it under the vacuum, you disturbed it and it started leaking vacuum. Which it might be a small leak that you only can read with a micron meter and not an analog meter. That's another purpose to get a vehicle with a micron meter. Okay, so enough of that. Now if this doesn't, if I don't find it in my obvious leaks, we are going to skip to, I'm going to have to put the phone down, and we are going to skip to me taking out the nitrogen and having the UV dye in there. This was all taken apart, so any one of the seals, that we're talking all this stuff was taken off. I could have a leak anywhere, but I'm just going for the pattern problems, the known good problems, and the really obvious ones because I'm holding the camera in my hand. So. It looks like I don't have a bust out. Let's see if I could bust it out with a little more pressure. Let's crank this puppy up some more. Hey, let's go about 600 PSI. I'm, I'm kidding. Okay, approaching 150. That'll be about my limit. I want to go on this guy and then I'll turn it off. So let's cut it off right there. That's good enough for government work for a vehicle that came back from the Rust Belt to Chicago. Okay, so I'm turning off my supply of dry nitrogen. And the leak is not so big that the tents, you see 148, but then you see 0.7. So usually, sometimes you'll see the 0.7 drifting down. And when the 0.7 drifts down, it could go really slow, like one tenth of one PSI, say every minute. You would never read that on an analog gauge unless you let it sit there for 15 minutes. Okay, so we are not going after a big leak. And it's possible, because I just put positive, positive pressure in here, I just rolled the seals on the case forward enough where they hit up against metal like that, and they just sealed themselves and the leak will only happen after I charge this system up. The case gets hot, it starts expanding, and has the pulsations of the piston actually pulsating the case, and uh, a r old rubber gasket O-ring around here cannot compensate for the pulsation of the case, and we will see a leak here like you've seen in my other leaks under the same condition for this particular compressor. So, putting down the camera right now, even though it dropped from 0.7 to 0.6 on here within this minute of me talking, because I did not steady out the gauges under nitrogen. So when you use nitrogen, and I'm rushing all this for the video, because I got more jobs to do, um, you would leave it open and steady out, say five, 10, 15 minutes. Not touch the nitrogen, not turn it off. Then you would turn off your supply of nitrogen. Maybe wait another five minutes. And then you could put it through the tightness test where you would hit the tightness button right there. Boom, it's under tightness test. Hit enter to start it. Now it just started a counter. You're equal at both sides. It shows 0, 1.0 PSI difference because they're equal. And I just started a tightness test. Now, if this drops to 0.5, this 0, 0.0 will go to 0, 0.1 if this drops one tenth of one PSI and you can do a time to bleed down time decay time to figure out your leak and under leakage under pressure without waiting 15 30 minutes or more it looks good 
but let's find the real story in the real world when we put refrigerant in it and we have a hot gas flowing and all the metal components expand and rubber at different rates then we could get a leak later on but not right now see you guys in video number two coming up